Sarah, and today we're wrapping up books 11 through 15 of 2016. Book 11 for the year was Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. This is the first book in a new YA dystopian sort of alternate history series where the Library of Alexandria was never destroyed and has turned into a dictatorial superpower that controls all access to knowledge. Though the obtaining of knowledge is highly favored in this particular society, the personal ownership of physical books is expressly forbidden. Our protagonist, Jess Brightwell, believes in the value of the library but has gained most of his personal knowledge from physical books that his father sells as a black market book trader. In order to best serve his family, Jess enters training for service to the library and to be Become his family spy. Along the way, he makes some wonderful friends but learns a few rather disturbing things about the way that the library functions from the inside and the opinions of those who rule the library about the importance of knowledge over human life. So I first heard about this book last year when Kirstie from Melbourne On My Mind talked about it and I loved the premise of it when she discussed it and guys, this book was fantastic. I do have a full video review of this coming so I'm not going to say too much right now but basically I loved the characters, I loved the world, I loved the premise of the story, I fell in love with all of the people that are in this series and they are part of my precious babies and I love them and I just want them to be happy and safe and I'm really really excited for the next book in the series to come out. It comes out in July and I need it right now but yeah, this book was fantastic. I gave it five out of five stars. And like I said, full video review with more thoughts coming soon. Book number 12 for the year was Many Waters by Madeline Lengel. This is the fourth book in The Time Quintet, which is a YA slash middle grade fantasy slash magical realism companion series. The first three books in this series follow Meg and Charles Wallace, the oldest and youngest children in the Murray family. And in this fourth book, we finally get to spend some time with Sandy and Denny's, the twins and normal kids in the family. Chronologically, this book takes place between books two and three in the series when Sandy and Denny's are in their early teens. One afternoon when the rest of the family is away, Sandy and Denny's wander into their mother's laboratory in search of cocoa and stumble upon an in-process experiment that unintentionally transports them back to the time of Noah prior to the flood. Essentially, this is a coming of age and sexual awakening story. It's a really interesting read when you've read the first three books in this series because in the first three books in the series, Sandy and Denny's, who are identical twins, are painted effectively as the same person. In this particular book, they spend an extensive amount of time apart and they acknowledge that this is the first time this has really happened. And so you get to see how they both are sort of wrestling and dealing with being apart from their twin for the first time, but then also how they as individuals begin to grow due to this separation. The first time I read this, uh, I was probably 12 or 13 years old and did not nearly appreciate it as much as I did at this point. I didn't really understand what it had to do with the rest of the series because I wasn't really familiar with the concept of a companion series, but I definitely appreciate this more on this particular reread than I did as a 12 or 13 year old. I gave it four out of five stars and I have since finished the rest of the time quintet and will be doing a full series review on all five books where I will discuss more of my thoughts on this particular one. So if you want to hear more, be sure to keep an eye out for that one as well. Book number 13 was Dear Mr. Knightley by Catherine Ray. So Dear Mr. Knightley is a modern retelling of Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster, which I read as a kid and absolutely loved. Our protagonist is a girl named Samantha Moore, a product of the foster system who has recently graduated from college and is given the opportunity to attend a prestigious journalism program at Northwestern's graduate school. The only catch is that she has to write letters to this anonymous benefactor addressing them to Mr. Knightley and the writing relationship between the two of them will be a non-reciprocal one where she simply writes letters to Mr. Knightley and he does not write back. Let's start with Sam. She was supposed to be this socially underdeveloped sort of introvert who retreated to literature when life got crazy. And I loved the idea of that kind of character. Done well, it could have been really, really interesting to watch that kind of character grow and really intriguing to see how she sort of stepped out of her world of books and into the world of real life. Sam was just obnoxious from the beginning. Like her nervous tick was supposed to be that she, when she got really nervous or uncomfortable in a situation, she would quote passages from classic literature. But most of the time they were really obscure passages that like no one would have gotten. And she just came off as so obnoxious and pretentious and holier than thou. And on top of that, she didn't really grow that much as a character. Definitely not to the point where I actually cared about her life and what was going to happen. Beyond her super annoying main character, most of the rest of the people that we interacted with in the book were just generic and fell totally flat. While the development for most of those characters wasn't completely awful, it was just very generic and there was nothing about it that surprised me at all. But on top of that, the development of relationships between Sam and most of these characters didn't really seem to be there. Her main love interest I liked for most of the book and then something happens right at the end and it just became creepy and super stalkery and I was like, no, no, just no, this should not be a thing. You should not be forgiving this, you should not be okay with this, just mm, no, no all around. Beyond all of the characters basically driving me crazy on some level, the writing was just really not that great. It was somewhat addictive in the sense that like I had a feeling I knew where everything was going and I had a feeling I knew how 
how it was going to turn out, but I still kind of wanted to know. But nothing ever really surprised me as we progressed through the book. And because it's an epistolary novel, it's written in first person perspective from Sam as she is writing these letters to Mr. Knightley, the writing itself just felt so pretentious. I wound up giving this book one and a half out of five stars and I would definitely not recommend it. Book number 14 was For the Love by Jen Hatmaker. Effectively, this book is like a collection of essays that Jen writes just about all sorts of different things that women in particular deal with in our modern day. So she talks about everything from clothing to social media to relationships with your family and friends and forgiving people and if you're a mom, your kids and things like that. And I really, really enjoyed a lot of the different essays through this book. There's definitely some really fantastic and solid truth throughout this book. And Jen is quite hilarious in my opinion. I know not everyone is a fan of her sense of humor, but I really enjoy it and think it is quite hysterical. On the whole, I really enjoyed this book. Some essays I definitely enjoyed more than others, but there wasn't really any particular essay that I was like, oh, this was awful or I disagreed with or anything like that. I wound up giving it four out of five stars. Book number 15 was I Kill Giants by Joe Kelly. So my TBR jar pick for the month of February was a graphic novel and I had never read a graphic novel before, so I went to you guys and asked for your recommendations and one of the ones that Kirstie from Melbourne on my mind recommended was I Kill Giants. I read the descriptions of several of the ones you guys gave me and I just decided to pick this one up because it sounded interesting and Kirsty said it gave her a lot of feelings and I happen to be a fan of books that give me feelings. In general, I did really wind up enjoying the story. I'm not really gonna tell you much about it other than it is about a girl named Barbara Thurston who, as you might expect, kills giants. And part of the joy of reading the story was for me discovering what those giants were and how that played out in Barbara's life. So I really did enjoy that aspect of the reading experience. I enjoyed getting to know Barbara's character and once you figure out what the giants are and things like that, I, the feelings, oh my gosh, this, the story gave me a lot of feelings and I really, really did enjoy the arc of it. I don't know if I'm a graphic novel person though. This particular one is drawn completely black and white. I guess it's with the sort of like anime style. I'm not really totally sure or super familiar with graphic novel styles, but I was not a huge fan of the art style and the way that some of the panels were done was a little bit confusing to me. I had a, a hard time, especially in some of the earlier panels, figuring out who was saying what in what order. On some level, I think that there are aspects of this story that could have been developed better had it been perhaps an illustrated book, because I do think that the illustrations of particular things play a really important role in this story. But I think there are elements of character development that are sort of missed in a graphic novel format that I think could be better fleshed out in an actual sort of illustrated book. And so like I said, I really enjoyed the story itself, but the actual format of a graphic novel was not my favorite. I'm not totally giving up on graphic novels or anything like that because I don't want to say that just because I didn't like this particular one that I'm definitely not a fan of that genre. So if you have other recommendations for me, please let me know in the comments and I will certainly check those out in the coming months. In the end, I gave this three and a half out of five stars. Well, there you have it, friends. Those are books 11 through 15 of 2016. If you have read any of them, I would love to hear your thoughts. So please let me know in the comments and I would love to hear some of the books that you have been reading recently. If you want to follow me also online. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads, all at Sarah and Hayes. The links for those profiles will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye! Situations where I didn't really realize how much I hit... If his family just enters... What? Uh... One after... Because I wasn't really familiar... Because I wasn't really familiar...